Welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and also on YouTube for our second part of our War of the Spark standard set review. We have gone through the white cards already. If you missed that, if you're watching this later on on YouTube, you can um, just go on over to the uh, video playlist, I guess. I'm making a playlist with all of these, and the white video should be the first one, and we're on the blue video now. Um, so we're giving each card here in War of the Spark a standard or a grade based on their standard playability using the US grading system of A, B, C, D, or F, or also giving cards limited grades as well. Um, if you're watching here in chat, you can do exclamation point grade, just like somebody did right there, to see the grading scale yourself, the Google document with it. If you're watching this later on on YouTube, you can find it in the description panel. It'll be the first thing, just having the set review grading scale there. Um, all right. Uh, if you're just listening along, though, I'll go ahead and quickly read through the, the grading scale again. Um, just, I'll just put it at the beginning of each one of these videos if you're just listening to this later on. All right, so an A is a format staple among multiple decks. These are cards in the format you can expect to play against when building new decks. Examples from Ravnica Allegiance would be Hydroid Crisis, Kaya's Wrath, or Mortify. A B is a defining card in a singular, highly played deck, or a role player that sees play among multiple archetypes, or a very common sideboard card, so like Gatebreaker Ram, Grow Spiral, or Cinder Vines. A C would be a powerful card that sees play in fringe decks, a card that is common in a highly played deck, or a fringe sideboard card. So Priest of Forgotten Gods, Precognitive Perception, or Collision Colossus. And a D is a card that you'll sometimes see in standard, but it's underpowered or a janky build around card, maybe Mesmerizing Benthid, Smothering Tithe, or Mirror March. And Fs are cards that shouldn't really see standard play, and that rating only goes for Mythics and Rares. If a card would be an F that shouldn't see standard play that's a common or uncommon, that's a limited card. And so I'll give that a the limited rating. Okay, so our first card for blue is going to be Ashiox Skulker. Four and a blue for a 3-5 creature, and it has the ability 3 and a blue, Ashiok Skulker can't be blocked this turn. This is not a card you should see in standard, so this is just a limited card here. Um, Augur of Bolas. This is a, a reprint that we have a lot of people excited about. One in a blue for a 1-3. When Augur of Bolas enters the battlefield, you may look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest onto the bottom of your library in any order. We have a lot of a lot of A's, a lot of B's. <laughs> the base nerd <laughs> knows knows the uh, the real part about Augur of Bolas. It lets you check the bottom three cards of your deck, basically. Yeah, look at the top three cards of your library. Put those three cards in any order on the bottom of your library. <laughs> all right, so what kind of decks do you all want to really put Augur of Bolas in? So obviously you want to be playing a lot of instants and sorceries. So, like, you don't really want to be a control deck, though. Like, you know, you don't really want to be playing it in, like, an Esper control, right? Because then you'll just Kaya's Wrath it away, and it's, like, two mana, sometimes draw a card. Um... So you want it in a Wizards deck? Okay, so Wizards deck where you play a lot of Wizards Matter spells, like Wizards Lightnings and uh, Rivers, or like, yeah, Wizards Lightning and the other one, the, the Counterspell one. <clears throat> this isn't a B-level card, is it? Is it if it's a 1-3 for 2 too often? It is a 1-3 for 2, a few, you know, a little bit of a time. So people, first, Logan, thank you so much for that resub there. Wizards Retort, there you go, thank you. People have uh, fond memories of this card because it was in standard with the Delver of Secrets, where you had another threat that really cared about your instants and sorceries um, that, you could, that you could play with it. As far as threats that do care about instants and sorceries these days a couple of people are talking about here with drakes yeah drakes are really like the the kind of thing is like would you want to play this in a drake drake deck um 
I, I don't know. I don't I don't know if this would fit in like normal Drake. Hey, what's up, Dirk? Um. Yeah, and it was in standard with Restoration Angel that could blink it. Yeah, and it could got to play really good defense for like Restoration Angel. Got to blink it, find other things. You got got to play Flash with that kind of thing. So you think every blue control list, it's a body that keeps you alive until you wrath. Well, is it? Uh, it kind of does. Yeah, and it had Sun Titan also. So people are saying maybe play this. I could see playing this with the new Rao combo deck. I think that's somebody said that in chat. That's a good, that's a good spot where this could go, uh, as a, as a blocker to block for the Rao to like help you keep Rao alive and help you find like your expansion combo and stuff i think that's that's probably a good spot for it that's the the best spot of anything that i've heard so far um i don't think it's a mono blue aggro card i don't think the one bo one three body matters in mono blue aggro i i don't think you'd put this in in a mono blue aggro yeah I don't I don't think it goes there. Um I I think I would probably go with like a, a C here. I think in Crystal had a C earlier. I think I think that's where I'm I'm probably looking at with this. I could see this being you know, I could see it you know, it, it has a it has a pretty low floor though. This this is the kind of card that could actually just not end up seeing played. But it is you know, it's not a bad card uh, in the right archetype, and um, I could see it being like if the the new Ral deck takes off, I could see it there. I I don't really see Drake's playing this card. Um, if there's a yeah a, a blue red or maybe Grixis a mass mid range deck that's like playing a lot of a mass spells and like this can help you find your your a mass spells like the new blue black um, five mana. Uh, like enter the the god pharaohs or something like that um it could maybe do something with that okay okay i could see that um the god eternals there we go that so i'm so i'm gonna go with the C. I i think i'm pretty pretty confident with the C here it could see a little bit of play in some fringe decks i don't think it's quite like growth spiral good or like we'll see that much play, but it has potential. It has potential to be a B, for sure. If if like a high like those if like the Rao combo deck is highly played and it does one Argar Bolas, uh, for example, it could definitely it has it has the ceiling to go to a B. It has like a, a lower floor also. Um, so there we go. All right, Aven Eternal two and a blue two two flying when it enters the battlefield a mass one. So it is if you have no other um army creature tokens uh it would be a 2-2 two, two flyer plus a 1-1 one, one. um maybe if you want a three drop in like a vanifar deck if you want like a value three drop that you know gets you a 2-2 two, two and makes another body and then you're gonna you know like so if you're playing like a neoform or prime speaker vanifar deck that you want something like that that leaves behind something that you sacrifice. Yeah. It is kind of similar to Eldrazi Sky Spawner. It's kind of similar there. Um, and it is a zombie itself. So if you're playing, like, if you get a blue-black zombie deck, uh, yeah, so Death Baron can, bu can buff it. Yeah. So that could be... Um, that could be a thing. Uh, just for a second, somebody pointed out like that Augur Bolas could be really good in Esper lists that are playing Time Wipe instead of Kaya's Wrath, because then you can uh, Time Wipe lets you pick up a creature. Is that the name of the card? Is it Time Warp? No, I guess it's Time Wipe. It lets you put, pick up one creature and then destroy the rest of the creature, so you can pick up your Augur Bolas back. I could see that with Augur Bolas also. Anyway, so yeah, Avon Eternal. Um, I'm going to go with like C-. minus. It may not, you know, good good chance it doesn't see play, but, um, or maybe maybe a, a C minus to a D plus. It could it could be a nice filler, you know. It could be a nice, uh, um, 
yeah, I guess filler is like the kind of card that I'm I'm thinking of saying, you know, could fill out some some deck lists. So C minus D plus. All right, Bond of Insight, three and a blue. Each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, then return up to two target, or sorry, return up to two instant and or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand, and then exile Bond of Insight. Hmm. There are so many good blue card draw cards these days that cost four and five mana, and planes good blue planeswalkers that help you draw cards as well. I, I'm i pretty skeptical that Bond of Insight is going to be something that you're going to be too interested in. Um, it is one cheaper than the Saga, but then it doesn't have the, the third chapter of the Saga that copies all the stuff. Um, it does help self-mill, so if that's you know, like, if you're playing, like, Drakes, for example, you know, like, you do get to mill some more instants and sorceries in your graveyard with, like, Drakes kind of thing. Um, and you can copy it with Expansion Explosion. Um, so you can do this twice, because it does cost four. And you can pick your Expansion Explosion back up kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, Chemist's Insight seems to be better at being an instant and everything. Gunny says, I wouldn't rate this card as a, a card draw card. It rated as like a, a yard fetch card that's playable without a yard. So yeah, you it is like a card selection card, you know, for your graveyard in the late game. You know, it's, it's not something you're going to really want to play on turn four very much because you may not have your two instants and sorceries already on turn four kind of thing. Um... So all of this is kind of telling me like D plus that, yeah, maybe a, a mastermind target. Yeah, so maybe it's like a, a real late game kind of card that you can have some card selection. And do you need a Kaya's Wrath and or a Mortify or, you know, like what do you need? You can you can get it back. But at four mana in, in standard, I'm I'm pretty skeptical that this will actually be a card that like a a tier one deck would want to play kind of thing. Well, I'll go D plus on Bond of Insight. <clears throat> Callous Dismissal. One in a blue sorcery, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand in a mass one. So it's a two mana one one that would that bounces a, a non-land permanent. So it's like mana war for two mana that you get a one one. I think that's still a limited card. Yeah, I agree. And especially if you already have an army, then you're only putting one one counter on something. Yeah, that's just going to be limited. Commence the end game. This is an interesting one. Yeah, if Callous Dismissal was an instant, it'd be a lot nicer. Sorcery speed is is pretty tough. Commence the end game. This is pretty interesting. So four blue blue instant. This spell can't be countered. Draw two cards, then amass X, where X is the number of cards in your hand. So yeah, Hearthger says this is just Torrential Gear Hulk that can't be countered. So it is, I mean, it's it's certainly worse than Torrential Gear Hulk, right? Like, it doesn't have the versatility. Torrential Gear Hulk could get removal spells, could get card draw spells, could, you know, could do a whole lot, could get Settler Wreckage. It could do a whole lot. But this can't be countered, which is big. And... In control mirrors, you usually have a, a good amount of cards in hand. And so, you know, you can have a good amount of cards in hand. If you're... it's The, the problem is it's not always a large, uncounterable creature, right? Like, six mana still means, like, it can be, like, one of your last cards in hand kind of thing. Like, there's a lot of times where Torrential Gear Hulk was, like, your last card. Uh, especially after sideboard where, like, people are using discard spells and that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of discards discard things in standard um there are times where it could be very big and it can't the fact that it can't be countered is really big like so let's say you have two cards in hand when you cast this and you get a four four creature 
<clears throat> because you draw two cards, then you have four in your hand, so you get a 4-4 four, four creature. So if you think about six mana, 4-4, four, four, draw two cards, do you know what that reminds you of? It kind of reminds you of Hydroid Crisis, right? Hydroid Crisis at six mana draws two cards, and it's a 4-4. Four, four. So this could be like instant speed, hydrocrasis, without flying or trample, so just like a regular body, and it can't be countered kind of thing. Now, obviously, both cards, both hydrocrasis can be, both hydrocrasis and commence the endgame can be a lot better or a lot worse than that uh, kind of thing. Um, the floor of this card is is pretty bad. Whenever, whenever it's, when you have no cards in hand and you're, it's just a 2-2, a two -two, it's pretty bad but it's still i mean still is draw two i guess that's kind of kind of the floor but six mana instant speed uh, that's a lot of mana and yeah you can get this off as canta so like late game i i kind of feel like this is like late game control mirror kind of thing um against aggro does it help you stabilize maybe like you can hold up settle the wreckage or if they only attack with like something, you know, if they try to attack to against settle kind of thing, then you play commence the end game and you you make your creature and draw a couple. Um, this card has some potential, you know. It it certainly has the kind of potential. I don't think to be an A, but it has the potential to be like a, a B, a B plus maybe even. Um, but there's also we have seen some like pretty good six mana draw card spells that haven't been that haven't gotten like any play, um, and so there, there's also pretty low. Uh, oh, there's a low floor on this card also. Um, you know, if we think about like precognitive perception that costs one less, you don't get the creature, but you get but like if you cast at sorcery speed, you get to scry three, then draw three. Um, even if you cast it instant speed, you're drawing three instead of drawing two. You know, that's 150% more cards um, kind of thing. So, I could, like, with standard being as good as it should be right now, I could see this not being, uh, not actually seeing play. But people will try it out to start with for sure. It will, it will be a card that people will be trying out to start with. So overall grade, I think I'm gonna start with it at, and you know like it's so it's so hard to, to tell and you know like these things like grades will be kind of things they'll be reassessing all the time. Uh, but I, I feel like it's a C. I feel like it's right around the precognitive perception level. Um, yeah. There are going to be times where it's a whole lot better. There will also be times where it's much worse. So I think I'm around a C, maybe C plus. You know, maybe a little better because it, it can, it has a lot higher upside. All right, contentious plan, one in a blue sorcery, proliferate, draw card. Um, you know, how good is, is proliferate? We have a lot of one in a blue ways to draw a card. Uh, you know, we have like Charter Course that draws two, then discard one. That that kind of looks a lot better. Like basically, Proliferate has to be really good for this to see play. You know, we even have um, one in a blue, look at the top four cards of your library, put one into your hand, which is a whole lot better than just drawing a card. We have that um, uh, card already in, in standard. So yeah, Proliferate works on Planeswalkers. Yeah, so you can pump up to Fairy. Um, unfortunately it is it is sorcery so like you don't get to like play your teferi untap two lands at end step and then you know instant speed cast this thing uh it does work instant speed i guess with the new teferi um but you know is you know like radical idea is two mana instant speed draw a card that has flashback you know this just has the proliferate like you you really need that that proliferate to be good for this to, to see play um I'm. I doubt that the proliferate will be good enough for the other cards we have. You know, even like discovery, we have a lot of other cards. Um, I I'm going with like D with this. You know, if you are a super friends deck, there is some high upside here. 
Um, but sorcery speed, if it was instant speed, I could see it giving a lot higher grade. But sorcery speed's kind of tough. Um, yeah. Some other people in chat are a little higher on it than, than me, like maybe a C. Um, but I think this is, I, I don't really expect too much from contentious plan. There's a lot of competition on what kind of card draw you want at the two mana slot. Uh, Crush Descent, three and a blue, instant, counter target spell, unless it's controller pays two and a mass two. So this this is a, a two two body. The thing is, is like these amass cards, they do kind of get worse in multiples because you don't just get like another like you'd rather have a two two creature than giving another two two creature that you have two one one counters, like in general. You'd rather have two two twos than one four four for the most part. Um, but yeah, this is just like a worse Frilled Mystic, right? Like Frilled Mystic always counters, and it's a 3-2. This is a much worse Frilled Mystic. It's a lot easier to cast, though. I'm going with the limited rating, though. I, I, I think this is just a limited card. Erratic Visionary, one in a blue, one three. You can pay a one in a blue, draw a card, then discard a card. I think this is just a, another limited card. Costs a lot to loot. <laughs> amass is a thing. It's the first amass card is is good, but it's like amass cards get worse together. Because a lot of these cards are kind of priced at like this has a mass two of like making a two two, instead of um, putting two one one counters on another two two kind of thing. All right, Eternal Skylord, uh, four and a blue. 3-3, three, three, whenever it enters the battlefield, amass two zombie tokens you control have flying. So it does make a 2-2 two, two flyer uh, unless it dies. Do you want this card in your Prime Speaker Vanifar deck? Is this like a value creature that you want to grab? Probably not. This is probably just a limited card. Um, but maybe. Uh, if they kill the army in response to a mass, well, a mass isn't really a a trigger it just it just happens so like they would have to kill like if you cast eternal sky lord for example they would have to kill your your amass you'd have to, they have to kill your army uh before eternal sky lord oh i guess this is an etb trigger so yeah um i guess that one specifically is an etb trigger so what would happen is you would make a 2-2 if they killed your previous army in response to this entering the battlefield. All right, so anyway, we're going to go with the limited rating. <clears throat> oh, this one's not a trigger? Yeah. It just enters the battlefield, you just amass. Anyway, we have our one of our most important cards here in the set, Fibblethip the Lost. One in a blue, one one. When Fibblethip the Lost enters the battlefield, draw a card. I'm in there. Wait, it has more though. If it entered from your library or it was cast from your library, draw two cards instead. Love it. And when Fibblethip becomes the target of a spell, shuffle Fibblethip into its owner's library. So yeah, this card is awesome. Love this card. This is such an important card for the various legendary decks that I build that like this like the two mana slot in the legends decks has been really rough and fibblethip is perfect to go in there you get your body you get to draw a card you know, you know it's it's a good creature you know you, it's that's awesome so definitely important piece of decks like esper legends and bant legends and and things like that um yeah sultai legends could be a thing <laughs> besides that it, 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 I think this can be like a surprisingly good part of standard also. Like if we're thinking about like Neoform works really well with this card. Uh, if you want to, you can sacrifice your, your Llanowar Elf and put a Fibblethip into play and draw two. You know, like if you like, that's like a worst case scenario. Like if you don't really have anything to do with your Neoform, you can just go put a two, two Fibblethip into play um, and draw two cards. That's really nice. It's also a good card to 
cast your neoform to sacrifice and sh- and you know shuffle it back and and go find something else go find a three drop it's a good card to sacrifice there kind of the same thing with prime speaker vanifar with neoform same thing great card for prime speaker vanifar um great card with neoform if the neoform toolbox deck neoform vanifar toolbox deck sorry i don't know the name of the, it's fa- if they want to play the green finale also finale of devastation that's honestly not that bad of a card to go finale of devastation so you can you can spend four mana go put fibblethip into play and draw two cards right so four mana one one draw two not the worst but you know it's just like it's like an option that you can have at certain times you know it doesn't it's not like you know finale of devastation can do other things also kind of thing uh it works with arc bow that is true also yeah the the vivian's arc bow um, you know, it's a, it's a solid card for you to, to find off of a, a Vivian's arc bow and put in a couple, like, I feel like this is just going to be a good enabler for a lot of different archetypes or like a lot of different decks. You know, maybe some of those decks are pretty janky. Who knows? Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. So like those, so like basically it can enable a lot of things kind of stuff. So I think I'm just going to go with. Um, I think like a B. I think kind of like a growth spiral with this, right? It's like a fringe play. So like, it's a role player that can see play among multiple decks, kind of thing. I feel like that's that's fair. I feel like this is kind of like a growth spiral. Like you can just kind of put Fibblethip in a lot of different decks, and it's just like a role player that fits there. Um, maybe a little worse. Maybe a B minus because you don't maybe want four with it being legendary. Oh yeah, whenever that grades just for standard. When we're talking about like the actual card, Fibblethip and everything, yeah, it's an A. Like I'm yeah, Elvish Visionary is a good card. And this is a, a pretty good card too. Um the body doesn't matter that much though? No, not really. No. Um it can though, like even like a Johnny Mentor Heroes. You can minus two, bring this back. Um Oh no, because it's not gonna be in your graveyard. Right. Oh it, no! It goes to your graveyard. It only it's only whenever it becomes the target of a spell you shuffle it back. Yeah. So if it if it died from like a sweeper or you you chump locked with it, it's in your graveyard. Then you can a Johnny Mentor Heroes minus two, bring it back. You can start pumping it up. ETB, draw your card again, recycle. Um, good with like Priest of Forgotten Gods. You know you want to make a, a blue black deck with like Priest of Forgotten Gods. Like this is a good card for an Aristocrats deck. You want to go like Esper Aristocrats or something. Um, good with like Bantu. Yeah, good card to sacrifice. You, I feel like it's just going to kind of fit in a lot of places. Yeah, the grading VODs are, are going to be on YouTube. Yep, absolutely. Um, and the white, speaking of that, the, uh, our, the, the white set review is already up on YouTube now. <clears throat> yeah, so Collected Company would be draw two. Yeah, in modern, Collected Company, Eldritch Evolution, that kind of stuff, Court of Calling. Well, I guess Court of Calling only gets green creatures, but I think, right? I don't remember. But yeah, those are draw two. Yeah, draws two with Druidic Vow, draws two with Neoform, draws two with Vanifar, draws two with that finale. Yeah, so I'm going B. I feel like this could could find room in, in different spots. All right, finale of Revelation. So I'm not so sure about. Are are y'all excited about this one? All right, so this is X blue blue sorcery, draw X cards. If X is 10 or more, instead shuffle your graveyard into your library, draw X cards, untap up to five lands, and then you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. That seems like a hard thing to track, like in paper. Uh, And then you exile finale of revelation. Yeah, it's, it's sorcery speed. Like four mana, you draw two. Five mana, you draw three. So like five mana, it's kind of like precognitive perception, but worse. Four mana, it's like worse than chemistry's insight. Six mana, you draw four. You're starting to talk. Seven mana, you draw five. And it's like, all right, well, that's that's starting to get, get to be pretty good value, like the higher you go. Um, sorcery speed does kind of kill it, right? So like, do you need to play this with like new Teferi that can turn it into an instant? Uh, and then you can have like Wilderness Reclamation to help you get more mana then also. But it's like, do you, should you really jump through that many hoops to try to play this card? 
Um, I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like the hoops are worth it, or like it's worth it to to play this. Yeah, if if you do if you do have twelve mana and you get to play this for x equals ten, the game's probably locked. You want to tap your five lands, you can start playing your other removal or counter magic or whatever. That's true, but. I, I think this is a D, a card that we'll sometimes see play in standard, but probably not. Like, I think this is a D. Looks like y'all are a little higher on it. See a couple C minuses. I don't think this will be very common. Yeah, would you rather have this or mass manipulation when you have a whole lot of mana? I mean, probably mass manipulation. I, I feel like you, you need, like, Teferi for this card. Uh, like, the new three mana Teferi that can turn your sorcery into an instant. So you can you can at least play this instant speed. But still, then that's kind of, you know, you had to have, like, Teferi alive. And it's like, we have Chemisters Inside and Precognitive Perception and just other card draw stuff. I don't know. I feel like this is a... I'm going with a I'm going with a D that card. Um I think I think I gave the what did I give the white finale? Um I don't remember exactly, but I think it was right around that same thing. All right, Flux Chandler. Two and a blue, two, two. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, proliferate. Hmm. Two and a blue, two, two. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, proliferate. Banefire is probably... Probably like a C-. minus. So if like finale of revelation should be around banefire, I could I could kind of see that. Maybe a D plus. All right, so some people are saying this is fantastic. Proliferate is going to be a fun limited strategy, the least. Yeah, I feel like this card is a good card, but not in this format. Um, yeah, it's a creature that wants to be a control X. So yeah, you're you're a creature that wants to be in a planeswalker heavy deck, and you're not a legendary creature, so you don't get to help with the legendary stuff, and. Because you're not going to really have like a bunch of creatures with one-one counters for the proliferate. The prolifer the proliferate's really going to have to be with planeswalkers. Um, adapt creatures with simic, but then but then are you really casting non-creature spells? I mean, I guess you'll have a couple. I th I think this is just a limited card. I don't think this is a standard card. Um, a mass spells. Okay, so you can make your, your one amass creature even bigger. You can put another counter. Every time you play an amass spell, it, it makes your amass thing a little bit bigger. So people are saying C in this thing. Firemind's Research. The thing is, like, all those kind of decks, I'm not sure you actually want to play this this three mana two two to kind of make your spells a little better i think you'd rather just have like another spell or like other cards that actually do things this i think this is just a limited card um font of agonies with this card hmm you proliferate the font of agonies counters yeah yeah i'm going limited with flux chandler all right, God Eternal Kefnet. Two UU for a 4-5 flyer. You may reveal the first card you draw each turn as you draw it. Whenever you reveal an instant or sorcery card this way, copy that card, and you may cast the copy. That copy costs two less, two less to cast. When God Eternal Kefnet dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library third from the top. 
so I'm I'm not sure I'm feeling this card. I'm not sure. Like I see a lot of A's in chat here, and I'm not I'm not sure I'm seeing it. So where where are y'all really seeing this one? So all right, so you're gonna want to play it in a deck. All right, so we'll, let's kind of start with like Esper Control. Like Esper Control, um, you know, are you gonna really want this thing to reveal some instant sorceries? Like, you know, probably not. Uh, even like even a cyborg card in like Esper, not so much. Um, so yeah, so not a control card. So for Is It Drakes? All right, so for Is It Drakes? Um, you know, our our four mana slot in Is It Drakes is is already pretty full. I mean, I guess if you're playing Arc Light Phoenix, so if you're playing Phoenix or or Crackling Drake, but yeah, so you reveal your top card. You know, you reveal a um. You know, you reveal a, a a chart of course. So then you can you can copy the chart of course and you can cast the chart of course for just a blue mana instead of instead of one in a blue. So you know it doesn't you're you're not really playing in like is it Drake's you're not really playing things that cost more than two mana. So it, it's kinda like having Goblin Electromancer out um that you copy um your you know your your one spell if if you hit anything on your for your instant or sorcery, so it's an anti control card. I, there are like a lot of good anti control control cards in the format. I don't think Kefnet's there. Um, it does it is it is good against Lava Coil. That is good too. It's good you know it survives Lava Coil and Finality, which is good. Like the four the the four five flying body is nice. Like four mana four five flying body. Um. Yeah, it is a May reveal. Like you don't Yeah. So you're not gonna hit you're not gonna hit that a ton. So Demir or Grixis midrange deck with some powerhouses. So for okay, so we're playing like a Grixis midrange deck that has like Kef, God Eternal Kefnet that like, you know, may reveal uh I guess like Vras's Contempt, and then you can go black black for the Vras's Contempt if you want to copy it, kind of thing. So yeah, it is. It's like sometimes card advantage, maybe, right? Like, it's not like always card advantage. So you have to have an instant or sorcery on top of your library, and then you'll you also have to want to cast that card immediately, right? Then that instant or sorcery card. So like, are you are you going to be like, and like, how many turns are you really going to be able to to do that? Um, yeah, so you, you copy this, you still draw that card. So basically, whatever your top card is, all right, you have your library. You have your library. Uh, let me find a, an instant or sorcery. Perfect. All right, here's your library. And then you you look at, your, you look at the first card that you, you draw each turn, and you see, oh, hey, it's a cast down. You can reveal your cast down if you want and if you do then you then you copy cast down and then you you can cast the cast down copy and you know it is like right then and that that copy costs two less if you don't reveal it you just you just draw your like either way you're drawing your cast down and it's going to be in your hand it's just like if you want you can you can um reveal it and basically have another cast down um so think of this with search for scanta Searcher's Kanta helps pretty nice because as Kanta does affect your upkeep, so you know you you know you get to look at your top card in your upkeep and then you know you're drawing a different card kind of thing. And it is the first card you draw each turn. So if you draw cards at instant speed, you are drawing a card on their turn, so you can do that on their turn also. So you know you you play your chemistry's insight. You'd have to have a, a quite a bit of mana here, but if you play your chemistry's insight um, and your top card is like another chemistry's insight on their turn, you can reveal that Chemister's Insight and then pay two mana for the second Chemister's Insight kind of thing. Uh, same thing with like Opt. Yeah, Opt works pretty well on on the opponent's turn there also. Um, oh, it does say reveal as you draw. So, so does that mean... 
Okay, so that means that um, you you can choose. Would you like to reveal the first card you draw? So you don't get to actually know what the you don't get to look at it and then reveal. It's you just. Would you like to reveal the card the card you draw? That does make it worse. Yes, yeah, so you have to reveal before you see it. Yeah. So that does make it worse so that, you know, you can just like reveal, oh, hey, here's a wrath. Uh, I don't have the mana to play this wrath right now. Or, you know, I reveal. So you, you're just, re- if you're doing it every time, you're just revealing all the cards you're drawing. It, that does make it a little worse. It gives gives you, um, yeah, you, so you don't have to reveal. So like if you already have like a planned, like what you're planning on playing there. So you have to, one, decide to reveal the card before. And, and then two, that card that you decide to reveal it does have to be an instant or sorcery and then three you're going to want to have to want to copy that instant or sorcery um wow somebody says just a plus only card that's better is nickel bolus i am i am not nearly as high on this card So y'all are saying it works like a miracle, so you you get to look at it first before you reveal. So you, okay, so some people are saying now that you you get to look at the card and then decide if you want to reveal it or not. Um, that is certainly better. It's certainly better if you get to look at it first. Okay, so they're saying it's like miracle. Okay. Okay, so a lot of people are kind of confirming that. Um, okay, so yep, in the release notes, you you look at you look at the card as you draw it before choosing whether to reveal it. Okay, so you do get to look at it, so that's certainly better. Uh, anyway, yeah, the body is pretty good value, four mana, four five flying, that is good. Um, I'm going with like. I mean, a lot of y'all are are pretty high on this card, but I'm I'm not as as high on this. But you know, maybe maybe it does get more, maybe it's going to get more card advantage and and everything than what I'm I'm seeing right now. It's the kind of card that's likely going to have other decks kind of built around it. You know, like like people are talking about like maybe like is it shell built around it in, instead of Drake's or maybe you know with Crackling Drake also kind of thing. But yeah, I'm thinking it's definitely not lower than a B, but I don't think it's much higher. I think B is is pretty solid here, maybe B plus. Um, so yeah, I, I'm thinking I'm thinking a B for God Eternal Kefnet. But I I'm not thinking A. I like I don't think this is an A. This could be one that I'm wrong about. I'm not really confident in that. Um, yeah, I'll go B plus. There we go. B plus for God Eternal Kefna. All right, Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. One blue, blue, blue for four mana, or sorry, for four loyalty Planeswalker. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. All right, that's some weird text. Uh, plus one, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard, draw a card. And minus eight, draw seven cards. Then, if your library has no cards in it, you win the game. So basically what we have here is a four mana, four loyalty planeswalker that has that's going to tick up and mill two for either yourself or your opponent, depending on which, which one you want, and then draw a card. And that's kind of what it basically does the whole time. Then it has an, an ultimate of draw seven. I don't expect the, the other clause to matter too much it's the kind of thing that like if you're really trying to build your deck to try to win with the draw card while your library has no cards in it then your opponent can kind of sit there and like let you like mill a ton self mill a ton and then like get rid of your jace and then you're like don't have your library anymore and then you lose i don't know it's kind of risky um but besides that it's it's pretty good you know like Drawing a card every turn for your four mana planeswalker is certainly 
not bad. Like that that's that's still pretty good. Um somebody says it's not as good as Karn. I'm not sure. You get to like Karn's kind of a little annoying how like your opponent gets to choose, then your opponent also knows the cards and kind of can play around them and, and that kind of stuff. Jace, you're just you're just drawing the cards. The mill two can can certainly you can do some work with that. You know, it does it does some good stuff with your um cards with uh the new flashback, whatever the chemistry's insight has. It's uh not off, like it's I can't think of the name. The new the new flashback, whatever that's called. You can mill over cards with that. Um you can fill your your library for or your graveyard for things like Crackling Drake. Um jumpstart. There you go. You can put you can try to put like Arc Light Phoenixes in your graveyard. You know, you can you can mill towards like getting more Arc Light Phoenixes. Um, somebody pointed out here that it works well with Kaya, where you can mill your opponent and then give your give your Kaya some some fuel. Um, it works with Glorious Rebirth with a Legend deck. If you ever want to play an Esper Legend deck, mill mill over some cards for for Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. Um, so, so there's a question: Isn't the ultimate worded? So that if you have only five cards in your library and you ultimate this Jace, then you lose the game. The or because uh, you lose the game state before the effect would happen. Because so like, do you have to draw exactly seven? I can't imagine it's it's like that because that's so weird. Draw seven. Then if you have no cards in library, like if if you only had like two cards in library and you did that, would you like draw then draw and then like oh you can't draw the thirds so you lose. Oh well, it has it has this other part here also. But if you would draw a card while your library has no, so no, you'd still win because it has this part here too. So yeah, never mind. You're good. You're good. So that's why it's because if the minus eight would kill the Jace, that's why it has this. So yeah, um, it's in case the ultimate and die. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, so bl- the. Yeah, so just like uh, King Toll said that earlier, the one of the th- the things that I'm probably the least excited about with this card is the triple blue and the mana cost. That's pretty that's pretty tough, especially how many good multicolor cards there are in just standard right now. How you like you really want to be playing like three colors, uh, you know, like the mana is really good. Having blue, 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 that's that's kind of rough. Um, if it was, you know, I, I think that that's going to hurt the the card. Our mana base is pretty good, though. That is that is true. It's, but even if you think about like Esper, like if you're trying to play like Kaya's Wrath and Jace, that's kind of tough. Like it is kind of tough to play, uh, white, white, black, black, and one blue, 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 in the same decks. Um. So it's it's kind of it, that's kind of tough. I do like Jace though. I'm gonna give Jace like a, um. Hmm. Maybe a B minus. Yeah. Maybe a C plus. I think some some people are saying it's a C. By that grading there. Uh, how do I feel about this Jace in modern, or are you talking about Jace the Mind Sculptor in modern? Uh, this Jace, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I haven't thought about this Jace at all in modern. Jace the Mind Sculptor is good. this one okay yeah i would i'd have to i don't i don't know i don't <laughs> i don't know about this and this one in modern so you're saying a in your book we're sleeping on him so i'm going like b minus to c plus for jace here jace's triumph two and a blue draw two cards if you control jace planeswalker draw three cards I think this is just limited. It's not bad though. It's it's one to like, you know, to think about, like to to remember that it's in standard. But I think it's just a limited card. We have we have a lot of really good card draw in standard right now. There's so much good card draw, and I think this is just limited. Um, it is divination with upside. We already have that with secrets of the golden city. That's you know, draw two, and then if you have the the city's blessing, you draw three instead. And I feel like this is basically 
it's very similar to that. Like if you're untapping with a Jace Planeswalker, you're already doing pretty good. I don't know. I feel it's it's basically that. It's this is like limited. <laughs> yeah, Brain Geyser is a D. This is limited. <laughs> um, Casmina, Enigmatic Mentor. Uh, three and a blue for five loyalty. Spells your opponents cast that target a creature or planeswalker you control. Cost two more to cast. And a minus two can create a 2-2 two, two blue wizard creature token. Draw a card, then discard a card. So we have like some C pluses, a B, a couple Ds, C... Um, we have an F. Bachelor is super bad to somebody. <clears throat> yeah. So, what are we wanting to do with this card? This this seems strong. I'm saying I'm saying C. Maybe C plus. Pretty decent. Hmm. So if we're we're spending four mana, we're making like a four mana two two draw a card then discard a card. Uh, then we also have the Kazmina around that, that means their targeted spells cost two more. Um, hmm. Is that really that great? Does this even go in a super friends list? Like, are you, do you want to, do you want to have four mana, two, two? Draw a card, discard a card, and then also a, th a three loyalty planeswalker that you can do that again the next turn. Maybe not. I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe. That's not. It's not terrible. Like, how valuable is spells your opponents cast that target a creature or planeswalker you control cost two more to to cast? Um. There are a ton. Of, yeah, I agree. So Hero says there's a ton of protection cards that either shut off damage or make hexproof at similar costs with better upside abilities and make a 2-2 and loot. Then make a 2-2 and loot. Sorry. This does make, like, Contempt cost 6. Yeah. It does... It, it is only spells, though. Like, uh, Hostage Taker, Ravenous Chupacabra, you know, abilities with, like, Teferi Tuck, like, all that kind of stuff. Vivian Minus. None of those abilities are going to cost more. It's only spells. Um, so, like, it doesn't, doesn't protect perfectly... So this seems like kind of like just a put in a super friends deck, and that's kind of about all. I don't I don't really see anything else for Kazmina except for a super friends deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with a, a D here for Kazmina. All right, Kazmina's transmutation: one in a blue enchant creature. Enchant creature loses all abilities and has base power and toughness one one. This card is. This isn't really that bad. If you're playing a blue control deck and you don't really have other great options, like sometimes you need to shut down a Niv Mizzet, make it a one-one kind of thing. This, yeah, this is kind of like a deep freeze, right? But it cost, but costing two mana instead of three is is pretty big. And you know we've seen deep freeze there, so I I feel like this is a a fringe sideboard card. So that seems like a C. Um, one deck that. I could see this being played in is I've thought about maybe like a, a mono blue or like really blue heavy, um, like an artifact deck, right? Like where you're playing like all the artifact matters cards, um, and Karns and, and things like that. And maybe, and like Jace wielder mysteries, but like that deck doesn't have like removal, um, or, you know, even like Shalai with that kind of deck, maybe blue black with Tezzeret. And you, I guess with blue black you can maybe have like some some black removal, but like if you're just playing like blue, um, one. So I was thinking like mono blue because you could get to play like all the the sweet colorless lands. Like there's so many good colorless lands, and like what if you just play like a mono blue deck that like wasn't really that heavy that was just trying to be mostly colorless and play the colorless lands, but you need like a little bit of removal. Okay, so you know not Jace, but I was thinking like five like the Tezzeret that's available now is like why why to be blue like Tezzeret the 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 blue Tezzeret that's available now. Um, and the Psy Master Thopterist and uh, the other 
new Planeswalker that makes 1-1 servos. But this could be a, a really solid removal spell in that kind of deck, though, is basically what I'm saying. Yeah, and this is really good against the gods. That's a good point, because, like, you know, the gods, like, can keep getting tucked back in, and this will keep them from getting tucked back in and that kind of stuff. That's a good point. So yeah, so I'm gonna go with the C, but this this could see some play. This could this could be like what those kind of decks are are looking for for some removal. Um, and you know it is it does answer Niv Mizzet without being an instant or sorcery and letting Niv Mizzet draw a card. You know, with it being an enchantment, just turns like the current Niv Mizzet into a one one. All right, Kiora's Dam Breaker, five and a blue, five six. Whenever it enters the battlefield, proliferate. This is a limited card. Lazotep Plating, one in a blue, a ma instant, a mass one, you and permanence you control gain hexproof until end of turn. That's not so bad. So it's it's dive down that costs two, but you don't get the toughness, but you get a 1-1 a one, one creature, and it's you and all your permanence. So, you know, it's it helps, it protects your Planeswalker. You know, like it, this protects Teferi, you know, like you can, um, you know, protect the Teferi kind of thing. Like that Teferi can untap the two lands and it does that. It does counter, yeah, counter his Banefire, right? Um, so, uh, Mr. thinks this is pretty busted. I think I put it as one of in my blue decks. Yeah, this is, this is pretty good. This card's pretty good. I don't know if, like, I think this could be a, a, maybe a B? I don't know if it's, like, like, it's going to be, like, a four of, like, Growth Spiral in, in multiple decks. Um, we're talking about Lazatep Plating right now. Um, Hearthgear says, won't see any play. That's the thing. It does have a really low floor. I'm thinking, like, B minus. To C plus, I could see this seeing a, a good amount of play in standard. It depends, like, if, like, does the heroic deck want to be Jeskai colored? Like, do you do you want to play Jeskai heroic um, instead of just red white heroic? Do you want do you want to be Jeskai where you can have dive down and, and Lazotep plating kind of thing? Um, it's the kind of card that it has a lot of potential, but it also has potential to just not see play. Question is, isn't negate going to just be better than this card? Well, this does stop. Uh, this does stop things like hostage taker and ravenous chupacabra, and if they already have like their, you know, it helps protect from like a, a Vivian minus or Teferi minus, like that kind of stuff, and it gets you like a surprise blocker, um, kind of thing. Let's go. I'm I'm still kind of getting a little lower on the card though. Let's go like. Uh, C plus. It does stop all kinds of things. Stops Field of Ruin. Yep. Oh, man. They, like, sacrifice their Field of Ruin, and you're just like, nope. Oh, it stops a Priest of Forgotten Gods activation? Or Settle the Wreckage? Yep, yep. And it just stops Burn Spells to the face, you know, like, um... Uh, you know, bas so that's basically, like, Negate. It's like any Burn Spell to the face. Um... Anything like that. All right, C plus for Lazotep plating. Final final answer. Yeah, and it creates a chump blocker. Not bad. If you already have an army out, like so, you know, your army just grows at instant speed. That they maybe you know maybe didn't uh, <clears throat> anticipate. Naga Eternal is some cool art, uh, but it, this is just a limited card. Two and a blue, three, two. That is a limited card. All right, Narset, Parter of Veils. One blue, blue. Five loyalty. A lot of loyalty for three mana. Each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. Minus two and... All right, so minus two is Search for Escanta Activation. There we go. That's That's how to say that a lot faster. Hey, Miso Miso. Um, 
not exactly sure exactly what standard is going to look like. You know, I think that they'll it'll change a lot though. I think there's a, a lot of um, cards that we'll be able to build around. So, yeah, this card looks awesome. So basically, the the biggest thing that I see Narset Parter Veils doing is being a control mirror breaker. Like we've talked about, like good cards to bring in from sideboards and control matchups. This one looks awesome. You know, make your opponent not be able to draw more than one card every turn. That is amazing. You know, get your S Cant activation also. This looks like this looks like an amazing sideboard card against control uh, decks against Wilderness Reclamation. Stop stop those Wilderness Reclamation uh, decks from just drawing a lot of cards with Chemist's Insights and Growth Spirals and all that kind of stuff. Um, stops Curious Obsession. That's true. Um, yeah. It's a combo with emergency powers? Oh, man. I didn't think about that. That's pretty sweet. Emergency powers, Narset combo? That's pretty sweet. Because, yeah, the opponent can't draw... So if you, if you cast emergency powers on your opponent's turn, they would have already drawn the, their card for turn, so they'll just draw zero. If they just do it, like... If you just do it instant speed, like, during draw step, they draw their card during their draw step, then you cast emergency powers... Then you both discard your hands, and then you draw seven. Your opponent does not draw seven. <laughs> so they just discard their hand. Uh, that is awesome. Um, no, put in, put into hand is not does not count as drawing. So um, you can like your opponent could still activate Nescanta, for example, and put a card into their hand. That is not drawing a card. Um, so that that sounds pretty cool. Um, Gorham says, I wish this was a four CMC planeswalker with a week plus one. I kind of agree too. Uh, just, you know, being able to activate as Kanta twice, you know, basically be able to activate this twice, get your two act as Kanta activations. You do want to just to sit around though for that, that top part. <clears throat> um, so I feel like this is, this is not, this is definitely going to be a very common side war card. It's definitely that. But I feel like it's probably more than just that. I'm not. I don't know if it's like a format staple that you want like main deck all the time. It's. I'm not sure if it's quite that. I think this is definitely at least a B plus, maybe an A minus. Um, I think it's. I think it's one of those two. B plus to A minus. Um, I'm gonna. Like some people in here were saying B, a lot of people are saying B. Um, yeah, and so yeah, a couple of people here just just kind of pointed out. A couple of people have said that the Narset was designed with modern and legacy in mind, which is why it costs three. Um, question: Wouldn't Teferi be better in her slot as an anti-control sideboard card? Not necessarily. Like, what's what's more devastating? Having to play all your stuff at sorcery speed. Or not being able to draw more than one card each turn. I feel like the second one is more devastating. Yo, shutting off Teferi, like Teferi's tick up, doesn't draw a card. Uh, Nickel Bolus's tick up, doesn't draw a card. Chemist's Insight, if you're casting them on your turn, doesn't draw cards. If you cast on the other turn, it only draws one. It, yeah, I think it's a cyborg card that, that can see some main deck play also. I think it's a definite cyborg card, but it also is good enough to see some main deck play. Um... So I'm definitely thinking like B plus to A minus. Yeah, Hydrocrasis. Yeah, you draw draw one, or you know I guess Hydrocrasis you won't draw anything. Yeah. Yeah, this this could just be a main deck card. This card's awesome. Let's go A minus. I'm going Narset A minus. Drawing extra cards is basically what, that's like what standard is built on is like drawing lots of cards, right? And this just being. Just being like, no, you, all those cards that you have in your deck that draw more cards, they don't. Uh, do exclamation do exclamation point grade if you want to see the the grade, the my grading scale, if that's is if that's what you're asking for. It does not hurt red deck wins, but you you can sideboard it out there. It at the very least is three mana and has the Ascant activation at the very least. Um. I mean, it, it kind of hurts Red Deck wins. If they're playing uh, Risk Factor, you can be like, yeah, go ahead, draw your cards. Oh, you only get one. It hurts Risk Factor. 
Yeah, stops Guild Summit. And yeah, we already talked about like Curious Obsession. Um, so, yeah, really good card there, Narset is. Uh, get this on turn two, like with a, a Land War Elf in, in like a, a, a Bant deck. Get this turn two. Whew. Already stopped Grow Spiral. <clears throat> All right, Narset's Reversal. Blue, blue. So, so final was uh, an A minus for Narset Part Reveals. Narset's Reversal. Uh, blue, blue for instant. Copy target instant or sorcery spell, then return it to its owner's hand. You may choose new targets for the copy. All right. So, yeah, even that. Yeah. So somebody says here this next card is obscene. Somebody says A. A lot of y'all are really high on on Narset's Reversal, and I'm I'm not there. I I'm not there yet. This is this is incredible with Nexus of Fate. Uh, cuz you get to you can copy your own Nexus of Fate, put your Nexus of Fate back in your hand. It is awesome there. It is it is great with like Karn's Temporal Sundering, same kind of thing. It's great with the extra turn stuff. I don't feel it's it's as good as like with your opponent's spells though. It does beat Dovin's Veto, but I'm I'm not sure like how I'm not sure if you're wanting to play a card that's specifically designed to beat Dovin's Veto. Like, I, I don't, I don't know if that's that kind of thing. I don't think, I don't think it's another piece of Ral combo, right? It doesn't work with Ral combo, does it? Because, so like, let's say, let's say you cast Opt, and then you cast Expansion to copy the Opt, and then you have a Narset's Reversal also. Like let's say, like you know, let's say you have expansion and Narset's reversal, not expansion, expansion. So you would copy the expansion, and then you would let Narset's reversal resolve, which Narset's reversal would turn into an expansion. But then the other expansion goes back to your hand whenever that resolves. So now you have an opt in an expansion on the stack, and your other expansion is back in your hand. If you have the mana, I guess if you have seven mana, if you then have the mana to then cast that expansion back in your hand again, then you could play that new expansion to copy the first. Yeah, so you'd have to have, okay, so you'd have to have more mana there. So yeah, you need two extra mana. Um, but... Like this, this kind of reminds me a little bit of mission briefing. Everybody was like really excited about mission briefing whenever Guilds of Ravnica came out. Um, you know, like people were really excited about it. You know, calling it new Snapcaster kind of thing. And this, this kind of seems like the same kind of card to me that a lot of people are excited about right now. But then it, people kind of play with the card and f find out that it doesn't. It's not really worth it too much. Um, It is a, a really weird remand. I, I feel it is kind of like the best to, to copy your own things and put them back in your hand. That's kind of like the best is like copying your own things. Um, but I guess like if you're gonna your opponent casts Chemistry's Insight, you Narset to reversal it. They put the Insight back in your hand. You get to copy it. You get to draw two. That's pretty good tempo because then they have to like spend four mana again on an insight on a, on a future turn like that. That's certainly not bad. That's certainly pretty good. Um, so it's it's kind of like a counter spell there. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like counter their spell. They put it back and then you get to use it. Um, yeah. So if you're that's true you're if you have a creature and your opponent lava coils it you can narset's reversal and then lava coil one of their creatures so like against drakes for example like drakes plays a lot of lava coils and they have like their drakes and they try to lava coil your thing and you're like nope put that back in your hand i'm going to lava coil your drake like there are you could you can certainly romanticize about like the really good um situations that narset's reversal can have you can you can certainly you know picture 
getting some really good value with Narset's reversal. Does that mean that it's you know, going to see wide play, widespread play in standard? Is it going to be fitting in the 75 cards that the people have? I'm, I'm not as, as so sure about it. Um, it's a one or a two of in control. It could be. It's it could just be a cyborg card, maybe. It, like against, it could be just a cyborg card against other decks that are playing a bunch of instant sorceries. Because if you're just playing like a, a really creature, you know, if you're just playing a creature deck, you're just like sitting there with your Narset's reversal of like, what is this thing doing, kind of thing. So maybe it's just a cyborg card. Um. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't do anything against planeswalkers, enchantments, or creatures. There's a, there's probably going to be a good amount of decks that are just playing like creatures and planeswalkers kind of thing. Um, but it is probably pretty good in blue mirrors. I'm I'm thinking this is like a C plus. Um, maybe a B. Actually, no, it's probably maybe a very common sideboard card. So maybe like a B or B minus. Yeah, actually, probably like a very common sideboard card kind of thing. So probably like a, a B minus. I'm not I'm not sure if it's like r super common. Maybe you know maybe a couple of decks will like main deck one. A couple others will have like a couple on the sideboard. Um, like would you would you want this over Dovin's veto in your sideboard? Because Dovin's veto can counter planeswalkers and stuff. Probably not. I don't know. So B to B minus. I'm gonna lean towards B minus. Um, there. It's your favorite card in the set. Yeah, it's it's a it's a like I said, it's one that you can really romanticize over um, how good it can possibly be. All right, no escape. Two and a blue instant counter target creature or planeswalker spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. Plus scry one. I think this is just a limited card. We have some really good three mana counter spells already in standard. And I don't expect this to start seeing play over any of them. Limited. Uh, Re Relentless Advance, three and a blue. Sorcery, a mass three. That is also a limited card. Rescuer Sphinx, two blue, blue. Three, two, flyer. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you may return a non-land permanent you control to its owner's hand. If you do, Rescuer Sphinx enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one -one counter on it. That is a limited card. Silent Submersible, Blue, blue for a 2-3. When Silent Submersible deals combat damage to a player or Planeswalker, draw a card, and it has crew 2. So this is a 2-mana artifact. It's just not very good. I, I think this is, like, I, I'm trying to think of, like, a way this is not an F, but I think this is just an F. Yeah, there's no evasion. Like, it's just a 2-3 body, and you have to have, like, your crew 2 also for it. Um. Yeah, they, I agree. This card design does make no sense. It's supposed to be a silent submersible, but and like it's silent and everything, but has no evasion whatsoever. But like that's like the the whole point. Like it's like supposed to be like this card with like the whole point of the thing is it's supposed to have evasion. <laughs> yeah, they could give it island walk or something, right? And crew too, like can't like just crew one can't you just put like a, a little one one and to drive around a, this little tiny submersible thing you don't need two power to crew this thing all right it's just yeah it's crew two for two damage it's an f sky theater strix one in a blue one two flying whenever you cast a non-creature spell sky theater strix gets plus one plus zero until end of turn so this is like a worse we dragonauts I mean, it costs one less, but you're only getting plus one, plus zero. That's going to be worse. Yeah, I think this is just limited. I, I don't think you're playing this in a... Like, there's there's a lot of good Spells Matter cards in Standard. And I don't think you need that card. All right, here's an interesting one. Spark Double. Three and a blue for a zero, zero. But you may have Spark Double enter the battlefield as a copy of... A creature or planeswalker you control, so you have to control it, except it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it if it's a creature, or it enters with an additional loyalty counter on it if it's a planeswalker. 
and it isn't legendary if that permanent is legendary. So it can only copy your own stuff, but it has a whole lot of potential. Yeah, double Teferi, double Niv-Mizzet, you know, double Vivian, you know, double Biogenic <laughs> Uh Yeah, any of the Planeswalkers, you know, double Karn, double, you know, it's double Shalai, make everything hexproof. You already get a Shalai in play, get another one, now everything's hexproof. Um... If you if you do if you quasi duplicate the spark if you quasi duplicate this this will just be the a copy of something else so whatever whatever this is a copy of you can quasi duplicate this and then you make another one of those but you you know you can't quasi duplicate like if this is a Teferi you can't quasi duplicate the this because it's a Teferi it's a planeswalker um, yeah you can copy the gods and you have multiple of like those gods out again like. Just kind of like that uh, previous card we we're talking about, like you can really envision like some awesome stuff happening with with Spark Double here. Um, Wamba says, if you pre-order the set, will everybody get the same cards? I'm not sure what you're talking about there. Yeah, you can copy a Gideon. You can have multiple of the Gideons out, and then you can have like two Gideon. So if you play Gideon on three. You know, Gideon Blackblade on turn three, play Spark Double on turn four, copy Gideon. Then both Gideons can tick up on each other, and they can make them both, you know, like lifelink, I guess. I guess you don't really need to make a Vigilance or Indestructible, but that's kind of cool. Um, yes, you can copy a Legendary Creature, because see, it says if that... And this is not legendary if that permanent is legendary. So yes, you can you can make a non-legendary version of those. Um, so okay, okay, the fifty dollar thing with the gems that is uh, that you just get booster packs and you just get fifty booster packs. And so no, you get you get fifty you know random booster packs that whatever you open in those packs. So you don't just get the same cards as everybody else. So another thing you could do here, like let's say you have let's say you have a Lyra Dawnbringer in play and you spark double and you copy the Lyra Dawnbringer. And now Lyra Dawn, this the spark double Lyra Dawnbringer is not legendary, right? It says here it's not legendary. So then if you're also playing quasi duplicate, you can quasi duplicate the non-legendary Lyra Dawnbringer and make another non-legendary Lyra Dawnbringer. And so now all your angels get like plus three, plus three. And then, you know, you can keep copying that. Or, you know, like Niv-Mizzet, for example, if you want to make a new Niv-Mizzet. And then, and then you can make, yeah, you can make three, three Red Dawnbringer. Yeah, so you could have like, I guess Niv-Mizzet costs six. You play the Spark Double on Niv-Mizzet. Then you untap, you probably have six mana. You can probably just quasi-duplicate and flashback quasi-duplicate. And you can just have four niv Mizzet suddenly in play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many Liras or how many visits does it actually take to have him play to win a game? Who knows? But <laughs> you can win that game twice. So there's there's certainly some really cool things you can do with this. Of course, copying the Planeswalkers is awesome. Uh, with all that being said, is this really going to be a um, highly played card in standard? Probably not. Uh, but this certainly seems like like you can do some really cool janky stuff with this. I see this kind of similar to quasi duplicate kind of thing, um, maybe like D plus. I guess probably with, with yeah, maybe C minus with like copying planeswalkers is kind of cool. This is like this is gonna be a fun card to play. Whether it's like you know great or anything, who knows? Um, yeah. So C minus D plus, but this certainly seems like a fun card that um, be be a fun one to play all right spell keeper weird two and a blue one four. Oh yeah it spark double would be better in a world where elder spell did not exist that is true uh two and a blue one four pay two tap sack it return an instant sorcery card from a graveyard to your hand that's a limited card stealth mission two blue sorcery put two one one counters on target creature you control that creature can't be blocked this turn that's a limited card 
Tamiyo's Epiphany. Three and a blue, sorcery, scry four, then draw two. Man, there are so many good draw, draw spell cards in standard these days. There's so many good ones. Scry four, draw two is pretty nice. Sorcery, not so nice. Um, it does work with like the new Teferi, make it an instant is kind of cool. But like, do you really want to put this in your deck? Um, yeah, so this is just 4C. And 4C didn't really see any play. Tammy's Epiphany, probably not going to see very much play either. This is probably just limited. Also, kind of like how we talked about um, the Jace's Triumph being limited. This is probably just a limited card. That is a lot of cards, though. Yeah, Counselor's Insight still just better. Like, Sorcery Speed is kind of a killer. All right, Teferi's Time Twist. One in a blue, instant, exile target permanent you control. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So you don't you don't get to bring it back right away. If it enters the battlefield as a creature, it enters with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. So a couple of things. You can, you can save... You, you do get to save Planeswalkers with this, right? You can flicker a Planeswalker. Um, if you want to, like, minus a Planeswalker, you can then time twist it to get it back to its regular loyalty settings. Um, if you have creatures with ETB effects, though, of course, this is a good flicker for those. Uh, we've seen a lot of different things. Um, you can... <laughs> you can uh, flicker your Spark Double. If you have your Spark Double copying something, you can flicker your Spark Double and have it then copy something else if you copy a creature with the spark double it gets the one one counter on it when spark double enters as a creature it gets a one one counter and then plus it would get a one one counter here so you can get two one one counters on your spark double that that you flicker to to enter as a couple of things um you can flicker your crackling drake if instead of having dive down for one mana you got teferi's time twist on your crackling drake then make your your uh, Crackling Drake, re re-enter, redraw a card, and also put a one-one counter on it as well, so that it so that your Crackling Drake starts dodging lava coils and dive downs and or sorry, lava coils and finalities and things like that. Um, so I don't know. You could do some stuff with it. I'm gonna go with the D for T Teferi's Time Twist, but you never know. It could see some play. You could untap your Escanta. Hmm. You would turn your regular Escanta back into a search for Escanta. Like, anything that transformed, you would turn it back into the original. Um, that's, how, that's how that would work. Yeah. So if you want to, if you want to reset anything that transformed, you can. Um, but yeah, like, like, let's say, like, let's say you play Teferi, right? This, it's actually really sweet with Teferi. You, you play Teferi, you tick up, you draw your card. Your opponent has like a big battlefield and they're like, all right, well, I need to attack and kill Teferi, right? And you untap your two lands and then they attack with all their creatures at Teferi. You basically get to fog. You get, you know, did you just exile your Teferi and then put it back? It's basically just like a fog for Teferi, but then it also has like other applications. It's not just fog kind of thing. And you want to like flicker your hostage takers. Uh, that's kind of cool and that kind of stuff. All right, uh, Thunder Drake, three and a blue, two, three. Elemental Drake, this is, has some awesome art. I agree with y'all. This is some really, really cool art here with Thunder Drake. Uh, whenever you cast your second spell, you turn put a one counter on it. This is limited, but awesome art there. That's a limited card. Um, totally Lost, four and a blue, instant. Put target non-land permanent on top of its owner's library. This is also limited, but really cool, really cool art. We got Fibblethip here chilling on top of Ugin. <laughs> that that's a pretty sweet artwork. Yeah, this is a reprint. Totally lost is. Um, I think it was in Return to Ravnica, if I remember correctly. Maybe Gate Crash. Yeah, maybe Gate Crash. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a reprint. Uh, Wall of Runes. Oh, that's the Bola statue? That's not Ugin? That's the Bola statue? Oh, that's less cool. I was thinking that was Ugin. That's the Bola statue. Yeah. Less cool. But still. Uh, Wall of Runes. 
a single blue for an O4 defender whenever ETBs scry one. Yeah, this 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 is certainly a card needed for the high alert deck. You know, if you need like you know your high alert Arcades defender deck, uh, this is a good one. Um, one mana O4 that scries one. That's that's a good card for that deck. Um, that deck was certainly missing some defenders, some some uh, defenders that were valuable enough to put in the deck, and this this could be one. So not not a not a bad one there yeah it is better than wall of mist so uh i guess a d minus because the deck's not really built around that but it's if you want to play that really fringe archetype and you want to throw the wall runes in there uh that's you know it helps helps that out so all right we are done with our second color uh, we have gone over white, and now we've gone over blue. As you can see, our order up at the top of the, the screen. So we got black, then red, then green, then multicolor to go. All right, so uh, the best cards in blue, we had the best rating that I gave was Narset at A-, minus, as far as blue cards go. Um, and then God Eternal Kefnet gave a B+, plus, was up next, and... Um, Jace and Jace was like a, a B minus. Fibblethip was a B. Uh, those are our next ones there. So, those are the best cards in blue, in my opinion. Uh, Narset looks pretty nice. All right, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, I uh, hope to see you for the next one. Uh, st stick along. If you're watching this on the playlist, this, you know, we'll have red up next. Uh, right now, the A, the only A we've given so far is Gideon Blackblade was an A. Um, all right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.